For I'm saved, saved, saved. Life now is sweet, and my joy is complete. For I'm saved, saved. Judges, the second chapter, stand with us for the reading of the word of the Lord. And also Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, just verse 6. This has been in my spirit all week long. There were some moments this week of, of, uh, not being able to concentrate very well this week, but I'm sure some of you have been there with all that's going on. But I thank God for the hand of mercy. Some things we take for granted, but I, I wanted to talk to the young folk today, but not just them. But I want to talk to all of us and in my mind, I saw that, and if you don't mind doing it, and not everyone has to do it, but if you don't mind doing it, I just need you to sit by and sit next to a young person. If you don't mind, just sit, sit next to a young, sit in between, sit next to, there's, there's two young ladies right here, right here, and there's nobody in these, well, one of you, I was going to say old heads, but I don't think it's approved of that, so. There's three young people right behind them. There's tomorrow and yesterday and Tamar and Tyrone and just just get between them. Somebody sitting next to Sister McSpad. She's a young person. She Judges, the second chapter, I've preached from this on at least one other occasion, but saw something that I wanted to talk to you about. Judges 2 and 10. When you found to say amen. And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. In other words, they passed off the scene. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Let me read it again. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Uh, look at Proverbs, if you will, very quickly. 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hmm. I want to speak to you today for just a few moments from this thought, make the transfer. Make the transfer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now. Grant us your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Most of all, I pray for the anointing. The anointing that makes preacher preaching effective. I need a fresh touch from you now, God, that we might declare the word of the Lord. Thank you now in advance. For anointed hearts and anointed ears, the word of God today. Stretch us even more that we not miss you in this season. 
These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And for Christ's sake we pray. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Make the transfer. I don't know about you, but I'm, 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 I'm troubled. I'm troubled daily, weekly, monthly, and I'm troubled by the, the condition that our world is in. I'm, I'm troubled by the fact that we just witnessed a couple of weeks ago on television the impeachment process of the president of these United States of America. Trouble be because the, the, the evidence was there, but rather than truth prevail, uh, there was a choice by those that lead the country to act like it never happened. Trouble times. The Bible calls them perilous times. I'm, I'm not here to talk about our, uh, our affiliation with whatever group we are with, the Republican or Democrat. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm, I'm here to talk about the fact that, that a man was dismissed from his job because he told the truth. And in other words, he would have kept his job if he had just lied. My mother used to sing a song years ago, and, and uh, we, we sing it every now and then, that were living days, living in the last days, days where men won't mend their ways, something like that. Calling wrong right, calling right wrong. Oh, yes, we're living in the last days. But the world's condition is, uh, at best, a sad state. I don't know how much preaching I'm going to do, but I want to I wanna talk to you today, if that's all right. The, the negative seems to be glorified and emulated and, and, and copied. And uh, when, 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 when have you heard of so much death and, and multiple murders that are going on? I spoke with a good friend in Chicago the other night, and, and uh, he's an, an activist and for social justice, and he was saying, White, have, have you heard anything on the Pennsylvania side about, about the condition of Chicago? And I said, of course not. We, he said, no, they are, they are trying to squash it and act like everything is fine. And, and that's exactly what's going on in the world today. There seems to be so many senseless killings, and, and there seems to be no concern for human life. What I thought about uh, the, the other day that gave me the thought for this message was the, uh, the, the actual or the very confusion that, that the youth have to contend with just in everyday life. The, the hypocrisy, if you please, that the youth have to endure. And, and for this generation, things don't mean the same as they meant to the older generation. The wording changes over the years. The, the slang changes over the years. So some years ago, about 15, 20 years ago, I, 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 I share with you that it's something be, because there, there, there was a time when if a person said that, uh, here comes my dog, uh, you expect it to see a dog. <laughs> that, 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 those... Those, those were the times that we lived. Uh, when you heard the word spam, you, uh, most of us would think that's something on the breakfast menu. But spam is something that you, that, that you see in the computer field now. And it's, it's amazing because uh, a mouse had nothing to do with your computer. But a mouse is a rodent. But the, but the slang has has changed. Uh, 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 it's something because grass was something that you cut. Not, not, not something that you smoke. It's, I mean, listen, li listen to the change in, 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 in all of it. Uh, uh, when, when someone spoke about they were coming out of the closet, in our minds it meant they went in there to get something. 
doesn't mean the same. And stay with me now. Does, doesn't mean the same thing that we think that it means. And, 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 and we, 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 we heard the word crack. And crack was something in the sidewalk. Weed was something that sprang up in place of flowers. A hoe was something that you used in the garden. Gay was Marvin's last name. Meant that you were happy. This younger generation is fighting a foe that is det to destroy their commitment to destiny. In some aspects of this younger generation, there's a lack of zeal for serving the kingdom of God. As we are, as we talk about, uh, talk about passing the mantle and all those other kind of things and, and passing it on and another uh, generation is something because, or we talk about a new generation, we have to pass on to them how faithful God is. I don't think we tell the story enough. We, we don't tell it like it ought to be told of how faithful God is. Now, don't misunderstand me. Every generation has to toe their own line. But there's one area that we have to, that we have to agree with, and that is the goodness of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. And so when, when I look at it, some, because before we look at chapter, uh, the second chapter of Judges, we need to look at, the preceding book of Joshua. It ends with Israel taking possession of the land God had promised them, but, but they only partially obeyed God. And I found that, I found that, there, that the way to prosper in the ways of God uh, is to take heed to the, to the word of God. And I submit to you that much of the reasons why those who claim to be walking with God are finding it difficult is because there is what I call incomplete obedience or partial obedience. And in the book of Joshua, God proved himself faithful. Everything that God had promised them came to pass. There was one occasion when God held back time his son from going down so that his people would have enough light to defeat their enemies. The purpose of God was for his people to have victory, but there was something they forgot. They, they forgot to ask or for, they forgot to pass on to the next generation. I'm concerned, saints of God, that we're forgetting to pass it on to the next generation. I, uh, we're, we're passing on things, uh, things like clothing and, and money and all those other kind of things which are fine. But there's something we've got to pass on to the next generation that you can't find in a department store, that, that, that you can't find over here. There's something we've got to pass on, and that is the faithfulness of our God. God has been faithful. Everything that God had promised came to pass. There was one occasion, as I said, when, the, when God held back, the, held back time on their behalf. Look at somebody say, make the transfer. We can't continue to sit back and, and let this uh, younger generation just keep walking by and, and, and thank God that they're still in the house of God. I'd rather have them here in the house of God than down at the clubhouse. Or I'd rather have them here in the house of God. Even if their minds are not totally here yet, I'd rather have them here in the house of God. So when the time comes to pass it on, I've got the anointing to pass it on. I've got the anointing to make the transfer. Touch somebody say, make the transfer. It's amazing to me because when I read this second chapter of Judges, it leaves a concern in my spirit for creation. There is a special message that God sent to the children of Israel. They, they had the opportunity to live victorious lives, but because they forgot God, uh, God said he would allow their enemies to be a thorn in their side. 
And I believe we have an obligation before we uh, make this transfer. We, we must pass on to this generation what the scripture says, if it had not been for the Lord. I know we say that a lot, we recite that a lot, but I declare to you, that is the testimony of the people of God in this day, and that is if it had not been for the Lord. Oh, bless his name. I don't think there's anybody in here that was born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I, uh, there's some of us that had a plastic spoon in our mouths. Uh, but, but I declare to you, if it had not been for the Lord who has been on our, there's some things we've learned in these several years of living. There's some things that we've learned, uh, the things knowing how good God has been. And we've got to pass it on to the next generation because in not too many years, one of them are going to be standing where I'm standing right now declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make the transfer. I don't know what we're afraid of. And, 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 and yes, there, there, there are some issues, but, but I think we all need to recognize uh, we, we, we have some issues too. We have some issues too. We, we, we you know, there. Back in the day, there were just things that you didn't do that 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 old folks, uh, older folks, took as a disrespect. You didn't you didn't roll your eyes. You know what roll your eyes mean? You know, roll your eyes, and, <laughs> and 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 it wasn't four trips to the bathroom during worship service. Children's church was sitting next to your mama. <laughs> that was children's church. Holding a door for, for somebody was just automatic. But, 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 but it's not that way, in this, but it doesn't stop us. It doesn't stop us from, I, I find myself, I find myself, especially when I'm with, 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 with young folk out, outside, I might go to a store or something, and I make sure I tell them thank you. Because, and I don't mean no harm to you, young folk, and I hope you still love past after service. I know you will, because I'm going to buy you some uh, water ice after service. But, 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 the, but, but, but it's interesting be, uh, because uh, uh, telling, them, telling them thank you goes a long way. If somebody holds a door for you, young lady, tell them thank you. Young brother, listen, listen, let, let them go through the door first. Y'all not going to talk to me. Oh, bless his name. Amen. Don't, don't, don't go through the door and, and let it slam in the girl's face and then all kinds of stuff. Then, then, then you want to call her baby. She ain't baby. But there's just some things that you can pass on. There's some things that uh, my father uh, taught us. Hold, hold the door open in the car. Small things. Now the brother then jumped in, started the car. The girl barely got both legs in the car yet. Little things. Now, that's, that, that's our everyday thing. But the spiritual side of it is that the Bible says in Judges 2, said then, and when they were joined unto their fathers. In other words, Deacon Warren, when they died. When the, when the older generation started dying off. Another generation came on board. The, the ones that we've been dedicating Sunday after Sunday. The ones that have been given Bible names. And another generation came on the scene. But there was trouble, Elder Jones. The problem is they were coming on the scene. They were being born, but they knew not God. Woo. That bothers me. I hate hate to have pastor 30 some years and and I hope I got a few more years left in me but I hate I would hate to have done that and 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 let a generation get by that knows not God it's a problem when you don't know God now some may have a problem with this next statement but listen I'd rather you hang around and play and play, and at some point in time, the Holy Ghost get a hope to you. At least you're here. But they knew not God, and, and, and it's something because, uh, because if the church is going to survive, uh, we, we have to make this transfer. If We have to be careful who we lay our hands on 
in this hour of ministry. Oh, bless his name. And we're not seeing a lot of good examples out here. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I would go deeper, but, but it might be offensive. But, 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 but we're not seeing a lot of good examples out here. The things that, 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 that our young people are cleaving to. The things that they're drawn to. And so when they, when they see, see things that are going on in the world and they think that it's all right. But we've got to make the transfer, young uh, 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 senior folk. We've got to spend time in prayer and ask God to put somebody on our hearts that we can mentor in this last day. You're not going to help me now. Oh, God, I, I know there are times when folk don't want to be mentored. They, they don't want to be mentored. They want to have, they want to tread their own walk. They want to do their own thing. But, but, but if you ask God, God, that young lady right there, she, there's something about her. Truth of the matter is, somebody saw something in you. Oh, bless his name. I told you, my aunt said to me, uh, uh, when I told her I was, I was, I was, I was going to be a preacher, she said, you ain't going to be no preacher. You, you, you laugh too much. <laughs> Laughter was my defense against stuttering. So what turned out to maybe be a detriment to my aunt turned out to be a blessing to me. Oh, bless his name. And I made up my mind a long time ago, I ain't going to stop laughing because folk think I laughed too much. I enjoy laughter. Laughter stops me from knocking you. I mean, laughter stops me from. <laughs> you ought to be glad when I'm laughing. But the point I'm trying to make to you is that if the church is going to survive, we've got to make the transfer. We have to be careful who we lay hands on in this hour of, of, of ministry. There has to be a divine mandate concerning who or whom to pass the mantle to. And all of us, not just Bishop White, all of us, deacons especially, preachers especially, you ought to be lining up your spirit with Bishop White's spirit and, 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 and watching whom God wants to lay hands on. Get rid of the jealousy spirit. And who is God laying hands on in this last hour? Who is the hand of God upon in the last hour? It may very well be the young boy that's looking down at his cell phone right now. But give him about 10 more years, 15 more years, and the hand of preach bishop and the hand of God is laid upon him. And you look up and he's filled with the Holy Ghost, the one that God is choosing. Who is God's hand on in this last hour? Yeah, I, I kind of feel like preaching now, but I ain't going there. Who is God's hand on? Who is God touching? Is it that daughter? Is it that son? Well, wait a minute. It can't be her. She had a baby out of wedlock. It's all right. And you had homosexual thoughts. But God is laying hands in this last hour. The hands that tell God, thank you. In this last hour, might be somebody you know something about. But if I know my Bible, God used a whole lot of people that had a terrible background. If I know my Bible, God used a whole lot of women and a whole lot of men that had a background that nobody wanted to touch. But I declare to you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon us they'll speak with tongues make the transfer wait a minute every time she comes you got the little short dress on it might be the only dress It, it, it might be the only dress. The problem is not her dress. The problem is when you try to wear that dress. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Years ago, and, I, and 
one of the persons is actually here today, but I so hope they're not offended. But years ago, a person came to me and apologized and said, uh, um, I'm sorry that I had pants on, uh, Reverend White, and I was wondering what was going on. And then they told me that one of my, one of my preachers told them that pastors don't like it when you wear pants. I said, I've never said that in my life. And at that time, I've only been pastor about, about four years. And, but to go that route, almost chase the person away. But they stuck it out and been here for about 27 years now. And God is still working on them. Still has his hand on them. I think that we missed the point. Everybody that I've checked out in the Bible has some kind of issues that would stop them from doing what we think they ought to be doing. It's amazing here to me because if you, if you study the word of God, if you study history, you'll find that in many cultures it was imperative that the present generation train Equip the next generation. For some reason in our culture, people of color, we haven't caught on because we remember what they did. And then because we remember what they did, listen, if everybody in here was honest, If everybody in here told the truth, and I'm not just talking about actions, but even stuff you thought, none of us would have a right to be here. Not based on how we size up each other. Oh, bless his name. I'm looking at one of our young people right now, and, and she, she just looked up, but I ain't going to look at her now. But listen to what's being said. Doing something with her phone right now. She'll remember what Bishop said down the road. I remember to this day, my, my Uncle George was our pastor, and Uncle George stuttered extremely extremely bad. And he said on his job, the co-workers will say, uh, Rev, what if you find out there's no God? And they began to go down and listen and say, look at all the fun you missed. Look at, look at all the women you missed and the parties you missed. And he went down the thing and, and Uncle George, who stuttered real bad, said, but, 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 but what if you find out there is a God. <laughs> and we have the obligation to pass on to make this transfer. And we look at this as something be, because before we make the transfer, we need to explain the importance of the mantle. Somebody apparently within here now may be the recipient of the mantle because God wouldn't have me preach this to, to the, those that are not here. Somebody, it, it may not even be who we even think. I used to sit in the back of the headquarters down at Montgomery and 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 what and just just as a drummer and a d director of the choir and watch the elders and and the bishops up up there up there some of y'all been to 32nd and Montgomery and now we we don't have 32nd and Montgomery but now I'm sitting where they sat that may not blow your mind but I'm 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 puzzled because there were hundreds if not thousands of others that God could have chose. 
But just as there were words of discouragement said to me over the years, there were many words of encouragement. And I decided, after sitting down with my mother, I decided to, to take in the encouragement. The discouragement would have ran me out of here a long time ago. <laughs> so let's look at this, and I'm going to close this thing. It's something because we've got to teach them. Teach them how to make a joyful noise. How do we teach them, Bishop? Teach them by example. We, we have to teach them how to serve the Lord with gladness and how to come before his presence with singing. Teach them, teach them that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world of they that dwell therein. For he founded upon the seas, established upon the floods. Uh, we got to teach them who, uh, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place. He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. For this is the generation. Lincolnia, I've come to tell you, this is the generation. And so we've got to get up off our laurels and say, this is the generation. You just don't know. The young girl you offended with your words, the, the young boy that you said the wrong thing to, that very well might be the one God has his hand on. Oh, bless his name. We've got to teach this next generation. Three more minutes and I'm sitting down. We have to teach this generation the importance of the anointing. Oh, bless his name. The importance of the anointing. The, the Bible says when Saul violated the oil or the order of the oil, he violated God's standard. What standard, Bishop? He violated the God's standard for the office of king prophet. And because he violated the order of the oil, God looked upon him as if he had never been anointed. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, it says, Saul had violated the order of the oil. God asked Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him. Samuel was instructed to go to Jesse's house. And why Jesse's house? Well, because Jesse was the grandson of Ruth and of Boaz. This was the line of the promise, the, the lineage which Jesus would, would come. Samuel was told to carry a horn of oil, which was a, which was a custom of the prophet. He, he sanctified Jesse and the sons and called them. And as they came before him, they came in a particular order. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Eliab was one that came whose name meant God is Father. Eliab had to look. He had the look. But yet he was not the chosen one. Abinadab came next, and Abinadab's name means the father is generous. And then came Shammah, who, uh, he, he who God has heard. Then came Nathiel, God has, has given. Then came Redai, God has subdued. Then came Ozim, whose name means angry. But the oil refused to flow. After this, Samuel asked, is there another son? Lincolnia, who's the next one? And now, don't get messed up now. Pastor, you going somewhere? Not that I, but who's next? Who's next? Whoever it may be, God wants us to lay our hands on all of these young people. All of these daughters, all of these sons. This sounds like the sermon I should have saved for the weekend. Huh? <laughs> but I declare to you, the oil refused to move. And after this, Samuel asked, is there another son? Now listen to Samuel's words, I mean uh, Jesse's words concerning 
his son. Yeah, I got another son, but he, he's not much. He, he's not much to look at. Ruddy little fella. Always breaking out. He's red half the time. He'd rather be with sheep than to come in the house sometimes. Sometimes I see him out there walking in a circle with his hand raised. He ain't much to look at. David was not even considered, but the oil knew who he was. <clears throat> when David came in, into the house, the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. Just because hands was laid on David didn't mean he stepped in then. Young folk, hear me real good. You're walking around with a king's anointing. I don't care how much you, how much you do what you do. You, you got a king's anointing on you. I can only speak for myself. I can only go but so far when I was out there. Only but so far. Just some things God would not allow me or let me do. I, maybe I'm out here all by myself, but just some things, listen, listen. And at home was a preaching dad and a preaching mama and a praying mama. But, but, but some things God just wouldn't let me do. Some things he wouldn't let me get involved in. And so David went back into the field with the king's anointing on him. God isn't looking for those who are promoting themselves. But God is looking for you in, in ministry. God is not looking for those who are self-seeking, for those who understand, but he, for those who understand what the psalmist meant when he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. If we're going to pass the mountain, if we're going to make this transfer and mentor this next generation, tell them he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Glory to God. You see the children are running around. They got all that energy. Can you imagine Corey as worship and praise leader? <laughs> she got the energy. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, bless his name. We just don't know who God has his hand on. Help more time and tell somebody, make this transfer. Stand to your feet. I'm going to stop right there. Stand with me. Stand, stand right there. I've had it said to me more than one time since I've been a grown man. That I was the last one. My father said, Kenny was the last one who we thought. Just didn't know. Never pictured my sister and brother sitting under my ministry. That got Joseph in trouble. <laughs> when he told his brother's dream. He got in trouble. Their first response was, how dare you? Isn't it enough that daddy done got you a special coat? But I've come to tell you, I've got to make this transfer. Lincoln, we've got to keep our eyes open. Our spiritual eyes open. Doesn't mean that anybody's being pushed aside. It means we need to be getting somebody ready. Let me make this bold statement. There are some who left this ministry who were not supposed to leave. And I'll leave it at that. 
because my eyes were already going to and fro. And until there's a spirit of humility, they will stay away. They were never supposed to go. But they said things like, my, the Lord said my time was up. They were not supposed to go. And they, not at the time that they did go, were they supposed to go. And you can tell them if you want to. It's all right. Let that be prophetic. Because it's not in the easy place that he builds us. It's in the area that sometimes is a strain that he builds us. It's in the area. I learned how to play football with, with a broken nose. A couple broken fingers. Broke my knee twice. Came back the next year. Got right back, put the helmet back on again, shoulder pads back on again. It, 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 was, it was when you had some broken stuff going on that you began to build. We keep trying to run from trouble. Never told us to run from trouble. We're trying to find it the easy place. There is no easy place. My first plea is for those that understand the spirit in which I just preached under. Not, not those that are going to roast the pastor after service and what you think about. What, no, 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 no. no, no I, I got rid of that kind of talk when, I, when my hair left me. I'm saying that there are mentors in here that are not on your post. That are not on your post. Mentors that need to get about our Father's business. Intercessors that need to be true intercessors. Because we are fighting a demonic force when it comes to the children. <laughs> say what you want to say. I, I'm, I'm not talking about your child. Please, please, please. I'm talking about my, my children, my grand. We are fighting a demonic force. Do you not know the enemy first is coming, is, is after the children we've raised in the church? That's why you cannot become discouraged, parents, in well-doing. You laid hands on them. You, you trained them up in the way in which they should go. I pray. But then we got to ask ourselves, did we show them good examples? Did we tell them one thing and then we do another? I'm asking those to come to the altar today that, 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 that understand what was just preached that we got to make a transfer got to make a transfer got to make a transfer got to make the transfer we got to see Bishop John Wright said to me I don't know how many years ago before they consecrated me he came to me in Greensboro and said White he said our problem our, our, our church has a problem. Tell me you're not going to have a problem because he said we, we don't see spiritually the ones that God has his hand on. And he had never been, been here, but, but he said, he said, White, he said, you're one of the ones that God really has his hand on. He said, but We've got to see it as a full church. We, we've got to see it. Coming from. We've got to see it. Parents, you, 
you got a sense you got a king in the house. Oh, God, I wish I said, oh, I like that myself. Parents, you got a sense you've got a king and a queen in the house. That daughter, that son, you got a sense it. You, you got to see in the spirit realm what, what God is doing with them. Stop telling them you, you make me sick and you, uh, and, and, and they probably do. <laughs> There's probably some truth to it, but say it in your prayers. Tell the Lord, Lord, sometimes they make me sick. <laughs> Don't tell them. But you got to see it. Might have to go back, Sister Warren, we might have to go back to the to the old time where my, the old saint said, walk around the house and plead the blood around your house. You remember that? Plead, plead, plead the blood around the house. Go into the room. Go in the room where they sleep, while they while they way at school and, and, and begin to anoint the room. Look at the children. Look at me. What are you talking about? Go around <laughs> the bed they sleep in. Now listen, don't pour oil on the pillow now, but 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 in the bed they sleep and touch the headboard. Pray to God about their dreams. Oh God. It, and it's not too late. It's not too late. Others that want to come, please, please come. If you feel any need to come, come, come now. Come now. When I pass against the wall and it looks as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way you you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you. Others that feel the need for prayer at all just want to come for prayer at all. You can come at this time. And we're standing here. Want to come and pray for yourself? Want to pray for somebody else? Come, come. You made out. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over you. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You, you made a way. When our backs, when our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over you. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains. We're going to pray. Every eye closed, every head bowed. And... With your power. Let this prayer be a prayer, parents especially, where you're asking God for wisdom. For wisdom. Ask God to deliver you from this frustration. Don't ask him for more patience. Please don't do that. Asking God, just deliver me from this frustration. Because it's hard to pray when I'm frustrated. It's hard to pray. Just when I thought I had a handle on that, here comes something else. God gave you these children. God put these grandchildren in your life. 
because you just might be raising the next king, the next prophet, the next evangelist. You just don't know. Let's pray. Let's pray. Preachers, you can help me out. You can help me out. Minister Dwight, you can come help me if you need to. Spirit of the living God, we come. And I thank you for the foolishness of preaching today. I thank you, God, because you had here today who you wanted here today. We might wonder where is this or where's the other, but God, you had us here because you wanted us here. Families are standing together right now. Individuals are standing for their families now. God, there's been so much frustration. It's been so frustrating, God, that we're losing sight of the spiritual side of this. The enemy is trying to frustrate me so much that it's hard to pray. That it's difficult to call on your name. Been one thing after another coming in and out of our lives. Things we've talked about and things we haven't talked about. But God, I come with an open spirit today. Hallelujah. Lift those hands, lift those hands. God, I come with an open spirit today. I come with my heart open. I bring my hurts to you, God. I bring my pain to you, God. I bring the moments of frustration to you in the name of Jesus. I bring the moments, God, where I even wanted to question you, God. I bring them to you now. But I thank you, God, that your hand of mercy is still on me. Thank you that your hand is not just on me, but it's resting on me, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you've heard my prayers. Thank you that you gave my bishop wisdom today to preach what's been in my heart, God. Thank you, my God. For every moment of me together. So God, I bring my whole household. I bring my grown sons, my, my grown daughters. I bring them to you, God. I bring my grandchildren. I, I bring them to you now, God. Lay your hands on them, God, through me. For I might be touching the next king. I might be anointing this next prophet, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm not here by chance today, God. I'm here by divine order. I'm here because heaven wanted me here today. I had to hear this word today, God, in the name of Jesus. My family is at stake. My home is at stake, God. So I call the grandson's name out to you. I call the granddaughter's name out to you, God. In the name of Jesus. Men relationships, God. Men family relationships. Men sons and mothers. Fathers and daughters. In the name of Jesus. Hear the cry of that father's heart today. Hear it, God. Hear it, God. Hear the brokenness. Touch me where I've been wounded, God. In the name of Jesus. Lift those hands as high as you can now because, God, I really want to reach you today. I want to turn it all over to you, God. I didn't just come to church, God. You brought the church to my heart today. And I thank you, God. Go where my daughters are. Go, go where my sons are, God. 
you see my tears at night. You, you hear my moanings and my groanings at night, God. Oh, God. Anoint my eyes to see the next king. Anoint my eyes, anoint my heart to sense your next move, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of cover my sons, cover my daughters, cover my household. In the name of Jesus, cover us, cover us, cover us, God. In the name of Jesus. Take about 40 seconds, pray your prayer right there. Come on, come on, pray your prayer. Don't let me pray for you, pray your prayer. Fathers, if you're near your children or grandchildren, just lay hands on them. Glory to God. You may not understand it, but I declare there will be results. There'll be results in the name of Jesus. Father, mold us and make us. Fashion us after your will. In the name of Jesus. God, as the hands are being laid around this altar, fill hearts. Feel, feel hearts in the name of Jesus. Feel hearts. Feel hearts, God. Glory to God. The strain and the struggle, God, <laughs> is working for our good. The strain and the struggle, God, is working for our good. Glory. The strain and the struggle, God. Glory. My God, sir. He's sending the most high. Glory to God is working for our good. Hallelujah. The strain, God, the strain. Cover my physical being, God. Cover my physical being, God. For this matter is spiritual. This matter is spiritual. It's not flesh and blood. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Begin to go into a praise right, right about there. We thank you. We thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Come on, come on. His hand is on her. His hand is on him. The hand of God is on her. The hand of God is on him. Glory to God. Come on, let's make the transfer. Come on, let's make the transfer. Speak those things that be not as though they are. Glory to God. Make the transfer. Make the transfer. That son is not so far gone that God's hand can't reach him. That daughter is not so far gone that the hand of God reach her. Make the transfer. Make the transfer. Make the transfer. Make that transfer. In the name of Jesus. Make the transfer. You made Come on, sing it with us. You made.
else we've got to make this transfer we've got to make the transfer we've got to pass on to this next generation the goodness of the Lord train up a child in the way that you would have them to go and when they're older not depart. When they're older, they'll recognize something's going on with me and I can't explain it. That's where we come into play. Sharing that with Christ. Embrace somebody before you go back to your seats. If you're with your family, embrace your family. Tell them, tell them, tell them, make the transfer. Make the transfer. God bless you. Make the transfer. bless you. God bless you. We hope you've been not just encouraged, but have been challenged. Make this transfer. See something that maybe they don't see in themselves. I told the Noonday Bible study last Wednesday, uh, it was never a desire of mine. I never desired to be a pastor. It just wasn't. I was fine as an evangelist. I'm, I'm even fine now as an evangelist. But never in a desire. But when, when I left Harrisburg, the last thing that Pastor Chambers said to me was, no, I'm sorry, when, when I got back, when I made the move, and after coming here, she said, that's what I had been preparing you for all along. But I never, I never knew it, never acknowledged it. But she saw something. She saw something. 
And so we've got to see something. We've got to see something. I tell people oftentimes, I said it on Wednesday, want to know what your gift is? Get busy. Get busy. Start doing something. But God never calls a lazy person. And so get busy. And then through doing something, doing things, you'll find that you're moving in into your gift. Before we dismiss you, the, the Dwights are coming. Dwight 1 and Dwight 2. Can I get a mic for them? A mic for them? Which one? Yellow? Don't hit it, don't hit it, don't hit it. Hey, sister. I'm going to ask Sister Stacy to come up and also Sister Donna. I don't see Deacon Lee. Deacon Lee, I don't see him. He's in the back. If he can come out as well. It's okay. Talk, it was a wonderful word on today. We want to thank and praise God for our bishop. Amen. <laughs> Such a wonderful word on today. I call Sister Stacy up here and Sister Donna and her husband is in the back. Deacon Lee. Stacy, husband is not here, but he's a wonderful man of God. His name is Mark. Amen. And we had on Friday night, we had our val Valentine's Day celebration. <laughs> Amen. It was a wonderful turnout. And I'll tell you from the beginning, we were, when we first started and we had it going, it looked a little rough at the beginning, but we trust and we believe God and we push through it. Amen. But I brought them up here to start off the transfer. Stacy, been married two, two years. I believe Brother Jenkin, Deacon Jenkin, in 30, 31 years. And our winner, we had a drawing on Friday night for the winner that picked the first 10 couples, the first one to pay the first 10. We did a drawing and we pulled out the, the name and they won the gift on today. And our winner on today is Sister Tammy and her husband. Whoa. And Sister Tammy and her husband, if she can stand up, her husband's not here, but I want her to come up and receive this gift. But she's been married 50 years. Right, all right. So the transfer is that we're going from two years to 50 years. That's a brave man. And we just want to pour into the youth on today to let you know that marriage work. It is ordained by God. And you got to trust and believe the process. It works. And, it, and, and I can go to each and every one up here, and they will let you know that it's not easy. There's times that you want to walk out. There's times that you want to leave. There's times you, all that stuff. It, it's not easy. But if you persevere through it and trust <coughs> and believe God and put him first and foremost in your life, this, this is what you can accomplish. This is the transfer that I pour on you today that you would want exactly what you see up here so far as a marriage. And this is what's showing you. So the Heart to Love ministry is going to show you throughout the year, throughout the years to come, that's something to look for. Amen. And let my wife say something. All right, so give Sister Tammy one more hand. They won the, uh, the drawing on that night. Bishop, I'm going to turn it back over to you. God bless you. God bless you. Next Sunday is our Black History ce uh, celebration. And so we're, we're taking some time during the morning service. About, about, about 15 minutes of the morning service um, to um, it acknowledge as Sister Tamika announced all, already. So uh, come prepare the support of, of, of them on, on next week. Amen. God bless you again to, uh, to the Giddens. Giddens, thank you so much for, for your coming. And we, and, we, and we hope you'll come back and be with us again. Uh, we hope that your heart's been touched by the word of God today. Let's all stand. We're going to dismiss you. Amen. Anything else I got to do? All right. Hmm? Oh, the millennials, young adults, they have some refreshments out there. They're getting ready for their conference, so they're selling some items out there. It, it'll hold you over.